Okay, everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, I am the uh, uh, appointed moderator for this session. Um, we welcome you all. We have uh, uh, our select board, Chair Roxanne McCaffrey and Chuck Cardillo here. Um, we're waiting for Patrick White. He should be here shortly. Um, from the Finance Committee, uh, we have Diane Rouse, uh, Stephen Schatz, uh, Pam Boudreau, Neil Holden, myself, Jay Bykofsky. We have by Zoom, Jim Belfance and Bill Vogt. So uh, we're, we're ready to, uh, to get started. That was the noise that I heard before. They're not even chiming in. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but at, any, <laughs> wow. at, at any rate, at this uh, juncture, the first item on the agenda is to uh, discuss an annual entertainment license for, uh, for the facility at 2 Depot Street. And uh, I would ask uh, Chair Roxanne McCaffrey, yeah. please. We have a continuation of public hearing. Um, so I move that we open the special permit hearing to consider the application of handcrafted catering for an annual entertainment license application for events located at 2 Depot Street owned by the Berkshire Scenic Railway Museum Incorporated. No second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Justin, you are with us, I think. Hello. Yes, thank you for having me. So, would you like to go over your amendments, please, and discuss the changes that have been made? Certainly. So after our last meeting um, in reviewing the parking plan and uh, respecting the fact that, uh, you know, you can't necessarily take our word on whether those spots would be used and the shuttle services and all that, we decided to amend that parking plan with notation and um, basically apply for a capacity of 70 based on the 35 spots. Um, that are valid on that parking plan. Okay, yeah, I see that. And so now you've gone from 150 attendees to 70? Correct. Okay. Now, in terms of your hours of operation, so you basically have two different things going on here. You have an indoor activity, and you may also have outdoor activities. Are you Correct. Okay, your, your start and end times, so there's basically across the board, because I think you say you're starting from anywhere from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and ending by 11 p.m. Is that the case in both indoors and outdoors? Correct, yes. Okay. And you have an amplified music outside? If we did have amplified music outside, um, it would either be such as the benefit concert that we held last summer under the train canopy um, and or in a tented structure with sidewalls. Um, it's a possibility, um, but mostly, you know, in all honesty, I don't see with the diminished capacity that we'll be necessarily doing a lot of larger weddings. So a wedding focus would be in a micro capacity, um, looking at more doing things inside However, um, in the case of the benefit concert, again, yes, that would be outside. And typically as last year, that was held on a Sunday for a couple hours in the late afternoon. Okay. Okay. I see no further issues. Yeah, I don't have any issues just to bring you up to speed, Patrick. So they've gone from 150 attendees down to 70. Okay. Um, they have corrected the parking plan so that there's now 35 parking spaces. And we're still talking about the same start and end times for both indoor and outdoor, which is anywhere from, I think, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. beginning and ending by 11 p.m. Is it, Michael, do you have a recommendation on this one? Uh, I think it's well within what we've done with our organization. Right. It's within the business. Yeah, I know. So, here we go. So, yeah. um, at this point, um, I'd like to ask, does anyone wish to speak in favor or opposition? Hey, uh, ju just for the record, this, I'm Kevin Chittenden. Yeah, I'll um, come up. Emergency. Oh. Yep, please name come up and, and identify. Okay, sorry. No problem. Uh, Kevin Chittenden representing Berkshire Scenic Railway Museum. Tom Delasco is here with me as well. Um, 
So we would just want to offer ourselves for any questions you may have on how the museum was going about this and, and definitely we're in support of it. Well, I mean, I think it's pretty clear and certainly this falls within um, uh, totally acceptable, you know, the hours, both the time and um, capacity. and capacity in terms of the parking situation has been corrected. So um, that was the big concern last time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think everything is corrected at Great. this point. Okay, thank you. Thank Actually, you. I'll just make the point that um, as nonprofits have expanded their their you know offerings, you know, in, in response to the pandemic and just in general, the bottom line, um, it hasn't been without controversy in town. And I would just really encourage you to um, stay in close communication with the neighbors. Uh, you know, I think this is a great experiment and, you know, but, uh, and I know it's a commercial district, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting otherwise, but, uh, you know, it, it, it becomes tough because everything is so intermingled in this mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's our intention to be good neighbors. I mean, we, we purchased the station, as you may know, during the pandemic from the High Meadow Foundation. So this is our first foray into trying to raise some funds to maintain and restore the station. Good. Okay, so the revenue that's going to be generated by this will be restoring the station? Absolutely. Okay. But it's not restricted, though. No, it's not restricted, but it would go toward, you know, utility bills, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing a lot of work down there for some state of good repair stuff, and, and certainly working with other organizations in town to use it, such as the Chamber of Commerce and the Tuesday Ladies Club and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, anyone else have any comments or questions at this point? Okay, hearing none, I move that we close the hearing for deliberation of the board. Um, any further discussion you think is needed? Second. Oh, do you want to close the hearing? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, oh, I think um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm good with it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Justin is going to have to deal with all the other issues that he will have in terms of alcohol licensing and inspection of the building. But uh, that being said, he certainly has met the criteria. Um, so I move that we approve um, this particular application as just presented uh, with no additional restrictions. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Okay, uh, everybody, uh, we move into uh, the next item on the agenda, uh, the uh, draft minutes of the uh, Select Board Finance Committee meeting of April 7, uh, that is a week ago. These have been circulated. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Uh, second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, there being none, uh, we'll have to take a roll call vote. Uh, basically, um, Jim Balfant. Yes. Uh, Bill, vote. Yes. Uh, Steve. Yes. Pam. Yes. Yeah. Neil. Okay, uh, seven zero accepted. And I vote yes. Me too. Yeah. I'm sorry, Diane. I, 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 I always miss something. So I'm sorry. You, you, you're too close. So, uh, Diane Rouse voted to accept. She is the remaining seventh vote. Is that all right? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, um, the next item is discussion of the most recent draft operating budget. Uh, it has been uh, circulated to everybody. And I did a, a little uh, uh, quick review of the budget, um, and I would share it with you, and then I would uh, ask Michael to make uh, whatever comments he feels uh, would be appropriate. The proposed budget for fiscal year 2023 uh, is $11,549,383. And including education, 
the, the increase over fiscal year 2022 uh, is 833,424. The highlights of where the increases are, uh, and, and, and this I, is where I noted uh, the majority of that 833,000. The first one is education, 433,000. Uh, we discussed last week with Peter Dillon, uh, the minimal, minimum local contribution and the student increase uh, and faculty and so forth. Uh, the next increase is fifty thousand uh, dollars for fuel, uh, and uh, that's fuel and natural gas for our facilities, police, fire, highway, water, sewer, and so forth. Uh, the next one is the proposed new police position. Uh, that's eighty-nine thousand and change, almost ninety thousand uh, dollars. The next increase is an eleven thousand dollar increase in our allocation from the Lee Lennox Ambulance uh, uh, Maintenance of uh, Stockbridge Needs. Uh, the next one uh, is a debt service of uh, principal and interest for the Chime Tower, 57,000. Uh, the next one is uh, fund additional funding for Berkshire Retirement, 38,000. The next one is an increase of $20,000 for in information technology. Terribly important these days. Uh, you worry about getting hacked. And uh, ironically, uh, I might add that my, uh, my son is in the insurance business and he's, uh, he's a national authority on uh, cyber liability insurance. That's what he does. And that's- uh, Michael, would you mind bumping the font like maybe a couple of point sizes? Yep. Um, and uh, old eyes. And the uh, the next one, uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars for the uh, uh, conservation peer review activities, and all of that adds up to seven hundred and fifty nine thousand. And the difference between that and eight thirty three uh, salary increases. Uh, the the uh, union negotiations and uh, non-union employees, and uh, that basically is what uh, what we have. Are there any questions or comments relative to that, Steve? Yeah. Is that net of the seventy-six thousand dollars that's coming back from the school district? The school district money will be claimed as uh, one-time revenue when we go to close out the end okay. of the year as not pretty current under that miscellaneous line. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, Thank you. And we can't use it though to offset that because I don't think no, no, it's going to yeah. stay down. Mm -hmm. It'll it, it, it will become uh, part of the free cash. Free cash. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to be a current number. Uh, on line 39 and 40 up on the board right now, um, I can pull it off even a little more for you guys. Oops. Okay. Michael, I have a question. Is, does, are the, are the, um, uh, the salary adjustments based on merit in this country? I did include in did. merit in there, yes. Thank so, you. Uh, uh, right now, the big changes since the last board meeting that we had with uh, the selectmen on Tuesday was uh, increased 5,000 for the cultural council uh, training uh, budget line, $6,000 and then conservation agent, 20,000 to use to mm -hmm. review things. Mm -hmm. I want to point to lines 39 and 40. Uh, the, that's the big change is that the budget overall is up 833,000, but we are increasing revenue because we lowered it during COVID. We'd now be restoring the revenue on our recap and adding uh, just shy of 700,000 back. So when you bring the revenue back up and then plus what the budget changes, the difference is about 134,000. Plus uh, you might want to mention the salary savings from the emergency management position. Uh, facilities. Facilities right. management. So right. what we've done is redistributed the work among the facility director position uh, throughout the town. I'm going to be taking, I have it left at 30,000 to redistribute amongst duties that people would take on. And we're going to experiment in this first year to figure out where things need to be. And then I'll bring it in next year with a solid number. But this did allow us to cut 33,000 out of that budget line. 
and then didn't have us take on an additional insurance because we brought on a police officer, but because we took on the facility director, it's a net of no additional insurance position. So a bunch of, a bunch of offsets. Uh, if there's any particular line people would like me to go to, I can go to any individual department and Michael, one, one question I have is the third quarter just ended. Do you know what there were seats for for um, occupancy and meals, taxes for the first three of the four quarters for you know the actuals for 2022? I didn't grab that yet. Uh, I can I can get that for you. I, I can't pull it right up right now, but okay. I can. And I think we're also going to interesting to know what percentage of the overall year the fourth quarter usually makes you know from the point of view of forecasting yeah. i mean if you know my point is just like i don't know if we're over budgeting for revenue there or under budgeting but we've gotten out three out of four quarters of real information right well the state disbursements from those come in in the quarters so we should be getting the they would have just closed out the third one, so we should be getting that soon, and then we'll have. Oh, I see. Right, payment. they don't tell us. Oh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, we don't get. We we get the payments. So, because um, I know Eric has been sending me updates on what we've been receiving, the, the tracking from home. I know we just got a reimbursement on our small bridge grant for four hundred thousand for Larry Walk. So, going to be closing that out. So, um, all those different ones. Uh, your two committee members uh, online have their hands raised, Bill and Jim. Your two committee members have yeah. their hands raised. Yeah. Uh, any um, any uh, comments of Jim or Bill? Well, I'll, I guess I'll go first. Um, uh, where does the $19,000 opioid settlement that the town's getting, where does that show up and when? That, that will, I, I'm not sure exactly when we're going to receive that. <clears throat> so that's the first of, of settlements with the different companies that are involved. Um, so similar to ARPA, once we get the rules on how it'll be applied, it could be anything from a one, one time non reoccurring revenue. It could be uh, authorized like ARPA was to be treated as a grant. It's going to depend on the clarification on how we have to, they'll, they'll, they will distribute what are the uh, rules for how we can use it. And then we'll have to use it similar to ARPA. It might be restricted to specific uses. We, we don't know when that when we'll receive that, do we? No, not, not exactly. It'll come through, uh, through the state system and we'll receive it along with the rules of how we can use that. But it's the first of uh, settlements with a couple companies and We've been filing the paperwork necessary to have the town in play mm -hmm. to receive whatever funds come from that. Thank you. you have a question, Bill? That's yeah, that's I have good. one. Jim? Yeah, I, I'm not sure this is the place, but I uh, looked through that information you sent yesterday, Jay, and I saw under the OPEB budget that uh, I believe it was a $50,000 figure that was entered in there where previously, it was indicated that uh, we were caught up on that. Uh, one point that I would make, and uh, and Michael can correct me, is our current OPEB balance is $3,720,507. And a conversation was held with our actuaries relative to, we're one of the few communities that fund for OPEB, that's other post-employment benefits. And uh, basically the actuaries felt that uh, there was no need to fund additional monies at this particular time. At this time, due to our investment income, we're funded at 103%. So right. we don't need to- put And he's saying 50,000 was put in. But Jim, um, so if you look at, when we get to the capital budget, you'll see that the initial budget requests, there was 50,000, but then there's another tab for free cash recommendations. And you'll see that on that tab, when we get to it, it was removed because it is fully funded. Very so. good, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Anybody? Neil, Pam, Steve, Diane? Mm -mm. Nope. 
We're good. That's 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 the operating budget, and um, I I might add that uh, um, uh, just as an aside, that we are in the process of scheduling a finance committee meeting for next Wednesday, the twentieth, uh, to go through and kind of sign off on uh, what we have here. So we'll we'll talk more. Are you guys comfortable with this merit pay formula? I haven't heard that yet. Jeez, so, Michael, is it too soon to talk about that or? Nope, we can put that in. So what I did is uh, either one or 2% for individual employees based on their performance. So I did put that in under the categories of general government and under the categories of which I was going to go over, I need to go over with the finance committee, I mean, with the select board uh, evaluations and the rest. So right. I was planning on doing that at our next meeting. So uh, just from the budget perspective, though, where there's no, there's no raise based on, you know, just two all merit. Two, no, 2% two base for everybody. One to 2% additional based on. Oh, okay. That. Right. Oh, great. Yeah, that's fine. That's what you want. Like cost of living plus merit increase. Yeah. Right. Okay. Any anything else before we move on to the next topic? I I, uh, I thank Michael and, and staff for preparing this. It's a it's a it's it's a good one. And I mean, obviously, we're getting bigger, and you know, we have in my mind, I can only speak for myself. I think we have an outstanding team of people working for the town. All of our all of our officers. We're fortunate to have the staff that we have here. So, okay. Um, the next item on the agenda would be to discuss the most uh, current uh, capital budget, and uh, and um, I would I would basically uh, call on uh, Michael to discuss this. The key issue here is um, of what is being proposed, and we've talked about a number of these items, what, what should we fund with free cash? And uh, we have, uh, we have a, uh, a, a significant amount of free cash. It's, it's, uh, it's been audited at 2.523 million. Uh, and what should we use stabilization for? Uh, in uh, in the uh, capital budgeting, so I think that's the big question. You want to take us through the uh, the highlights of this, I can Michael? Take you guys through whatever you choose. I will just point quickly point out that uh, for Jim, Jim, there's the initial budget request, and on the recommended, you'll see that the OPEP trust is not and fully funded. So that's there. Um, so we so we still have some big big decisions on. Do we want to start with the free cash appropriations. We can walk through the free cash ones. We can walk through the overlay. Um, let's start. Let's cash. start with the free cash. All right. Okay. If if you're okay with that. So we had our original free cash appropriations, and what happened is we eliminated three of them. One is uh, the select board as far as the bowl testing. We moved that to the operational budget because it's been annual and ongoing. Mm -hmm. OPEM, because we're at 103%, we do not have to submit that. Um, obviously, depending on returns and stuff next year, we'll see where we're at, but we're right now fully funded. And then the hemlock tree treatment was approved as a CPC article, so therefore that was removed from uh, the free cash calculation. Mm -hmm. So we have right now all the ones that are highlighted there are the ones that are still in play as far as uh, what we've gone through. Um, mm -hmm. And we have everywhere from the highway trucks, agriculture, and I think that there's only two that we really haven't finalized, which is the fire truck and then about doing the loan payment because the loan payment ties into the borrowing with the $4 million in order to keep our debt schedule level. Right. So, but, sorry. <laughs> there is also a question of whether or not we could actually move a couple items. 
So last year we spent a majority of our, our reserve account that's in our annual operating budget. So we set 150,000 aside for any unexpected um, things that may come up. Last year was a cooling tower. Moving into, we have yet to spend any money out of the reserve this year. Snow and ice is over by $18,000. And because of not bringing on the additional position in the highway, we can actually cover snow and ice. The last two months of the year, you can move money with a combination of the Select Board and Finance Committee from uh, different lines to cover other lines. So we could cover that shortfall, which brings the question, instead of using free cash, would we want to uh, appropriate some money from the reserve, which would be the finance and select board, to make some of the purchases that we were proposing for free cash? I just throw that out there. Well, or you could basically, the 150 roll into the calculation for free cash for the following year, whatever the board's comfortable with. I did put up, uh, Right now, what I have up is uh, consideration for 110, which would leave us with 40,000 in reserve for the last two months of the year, or whatever. I, I just thought I should bring it to your attention. Do we have a sense as to historically what what demands have been placed on the reserve account in prior years? It's all over. The, it's a it's, it's a it's it's, it's, your, it's, your, for, it's your protection for yeah. the end of the year. So. Michael or Hugh, can you address uh, uh, this whole list is only one piece of user equipment is the backhoe. What does a new backhoe cost? Um, uh, actually, uh, uh, dealing with cat now, we should be able to probably get the new backhoe for that figure. Um, that's what we're hoping um, with the trading of the existing backhoe. Um, he's trying to get them numbers back to me as soon as he can. It's just, it's very hard to get vendors out right now you know, with everything. So, okay. um, but we are looking, you know. Okay, good. So potentially that's a new piece of equipment. It'll be a new piece of equipment. And the uh, one thing that I'm pushing for is the extended warranty with that yeah, new piece right. of equipment. That, that's my point. You may like have to sacrifice a couple yeah. attachments to, to make this happen. Why? But we can also, uh, maybe bring the attachments in later. Um, just in lieu of the request of how much that we're asking for. I'm just asking you, do you need the attachments to do the job? And how much are they? Well, I, I guess it depends on what, how we're moving forward with the rest of the things. I don't want my yard to look like a, a, a equipment dealership. You know, if we're going to have two machines uh, with forks on it, buckets on it, um, you know, blowers on them, we don't need everything suited in that manner. Um, no, I'm not. I'm no, not, no, I know. I have a hard time putting my mower in reverse. I mean, yeah. I, I'm relying on your expertise. You yeah, know, but um, if you need something, now's the time to ask. Yeah, you know. Okay, and I have a question. The equipment that we had down in Ashley Falls, mm -hmm. the attachments, have we ever retrieved that? And will that be compatible with this particular caterpillar no, be, equipment? No, because that tool handler wasn't wouldn't fit the new loader. That's why I ended up down there right. balls. We can't, the new backhoe won't carry what the loader will carry. So it's a completely different attachment. Okay. And my feeling is I don't need three sets of forks in our yard. You know, we, we use one, right. you know. Okay. You know, not often, but we use it. Uh, the smaller smaller machine will have a smaller set of forks. Okay. Uh, the backhoe, the smaller machine will be under CDL. So uh, water and sewer can hop in it and go down the road, do whatever they've got to do. Um, okay. So I think that will fill that niche nicely. Okay. Um, I just so uh, the parts in Ashley Falls and the place that we had to modify them, mm -hmm. maybe we want to look at getting rid of those? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know that there was We're not going to use them? Before on that and everything just kind of, that the thing just was you know, a while ago and things just kind of. Right, because they've been down there a long time, but yeah, if we're no. not going to use them, then I say we <clears throat> retrieve and we sell them. Yeah, well, there was a gentleman that was interested in, in, you know, that was there, but we can, you know, I can find out, you know, recent information on that. <clears throat> Hugh, let me ask you a question, if I might. <clears throat> With respect to the replacement of these pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. um, I, one of the things that I've come across in my travels is a lot of the junkyards now uh, buying, uh, getting this equipment and scrapping it for the aluminum content. Okay, this is what they do. 
basically, are any of these pieces of equipment that we're going to uh, replace worth anything from a junk standpoint? Um, well, yeah, I mean, they're definitely yeah. worth scrap, but also when you scrap something, now, you're got, now you've got to drain all the fluids out of it. Okay. You know, you, you're yep. not going to get full value if the tires are on it, the fluids are in it, you know, you've got to take all that out. But if, if we trade it in and get the most we can on a trade-in, you know, that I think that's the neatest, most, uh, you know, hazardous free, can I say that, you know, as far as dealing with the chemicals and stuff and just... Uh, I'll just say, Jay, that we, yeah. with everything, when we scrap, we declare it surplus. We cleared out the entire yard down there. Everything that was metal, we got scrap value for. Yeah, good. When we either get scrap value or trading costs or whatever is necessary to return, we go to the selectman to get it declared surplus, and then we dispose of that properly. So, just, just an aside, four mil. The junkyard uh, mm -hmm. down in Great Barrington, Housatonic, mm -hmm. they've they've gone into this specific thing. Oh yeah. Uh, with respect to extracting oh. components Thank of you is dealt with of junk. Yeah. yeah. Among yeah, others. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm very confident you'll get the most money on trading. I think that's. I think even yeah. you know that, I, that would be the nicest way to, to get rid of it out of the yard, and I think it's the easiest way. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it's the clock. <laughs> no, I think we have to take the batteries back out of that clock. <laughs> That's nice. Keeps it is awake. very nice. <laughs> Bill, Bill has his hand up as far as free cash. Oh, I didn't see it. Bill? Um, I, I realize we're looking at the capital budget, but looking at this reminds me of our discussion last week about uh, starting uh, to create uh, depreciation funds so that we don't have what we have this year and maybe next year which is these very large expenditures um, that we haven't planned for uh, to replace um, or acquire new equipment. Um, uh, I just make mention of that. I know it doesn't go in this category, but um, uh, are, are we committed to creating de depreciation accounts um, going forward? And uh, would that ha start next year, in the coming fiscal year? What's the what's the plan? So, so I would say that I'm going to be working with all the departments that have uh, equipment and making sure that we have a fleet schedule so that we understand when we'll need to replace them approximately. You know, we'll be exact, but we'll have an approximate date that things will be cycled out, and then how to fund them. Um, and looking at the different options that are available, which could be right, setting money aside each year um, in a highway dedicated stabilization until we're ready to pull the trigger. It can be a number of things. So I will have that for next year's budget. And okay. Thank you. Piece of equipment with a longer um, yes. life cycle. So you can basically yeah. kind of back into it by just simply financing that kind of different. Right. And we're going to try to stretch a couple of right. them out in okay. order to get because we're buying a bunch in the same time period to try to stretch out. Like if we end up with three medium sized plow trucks, we're buying all three of them and those have the same life expectancy. But I know I've talked to Hugh and we're gonna to try to figure out how, how to make that work so that we can try to space them out as we go along. Why don't you um, give us the, some of the scenarios as to funding some of this equipment? Well, all this right now is proposed to be used. This list right here is the proposed use of free cash. Mm -hmm. This would still leave us with 1.1 million in free cash. And you expect that to go up 800,000? I expect that to go up probably about 800,000. But then after this year, we're definitely closing the gap. And then next year, once we see the true impact of the, the meals and that, then we'll adjust that number up again. Local receipts, good, and we'll keep tracking it that way. So, which uh, has a better, more beneficial impact on the tax rate using it using free cash or using the stabilization fund? What was, that, what was the comment again? Which has which is more beneficial for lowering the tax rate? We're, we're not, we, we can't use free cash to lower the tax rate. That's not my point. My no. point is, I'm asking if, if you're talking about shifting from one to the other, does it have any impact on the tax rate to make that decision? So yeah. the only thing I would say as far as your, always your difference between your free cash and your stabilization. Your stabilization is a physical money. You know that's there. There's nothing counted against it. Um, nothing else. 
free cash is a calculation every year. Mm -hmm. So one example could have been last year when we had the Larry Walk Bridge and we were able to get the procurement. But if we ended up having that settlement outstanding, you could have a situation where DOR says, you know, you have an outstanding liability here and without cleaning it up, your free cash could have been lowered. So I never like to trust free cash completely. It's great that we have it. We're trying to maintain it, but you never know if there's something that could hit negative free cash. Your stabilization is actual physical cash that you have. There's, it's there. So. Is it another way to look at this, Patrick? And that is to the extent that we're using free cash or stabilization to pay for equipment purchases. Right. It, we're not borrowing. No debt. Oh, I understand. I was just wondering if there was any. So therefore, and so therefore, there is an impact on on tax rates. Of course. Yeah. So I just wanted to know if they were equivalent, whether it was coming from one bucket or the other. Basically. Well, you know, again, we come back to we're we're over reserved yeah. in free right. cash and in stabilization, mm -hmm. and we need to bring it down to the levels that we all agreed were appropriate. Yes. Right. But, um, and, you, and, use, and using it for the purpose of, of paying here. for equipment um, makes all, all kinds of I sense. I completely agree with this. I'm asking basically, uh, you know, if we've got less flexibility with free cash, are we then going to rely on free cash so that it's just, to it's, that first? It's just less certainty right. at any given moment in time. Right. Because until free cash is certified, which typically takes place in October, yep. right. in October, uh, you can't be certain as to the total amount that you have available, except that what we have here, the 2.4, 2.5, 2 is certified. No, it's it's certified. certified. So, right. uh, 800,000 coming up has to wait to October. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay, <clears throat> I want to go on. So let, let's. Uh, I don't think we have to discuss the overlay surplus for Mike uh, Blay. That's pretty straightforward. They declared 20,000, he has 20,000 for the revalve, no impact to the tax rate. Right? The board deemed it. That gets us to our, our big question, which is what do we do with, with debt? And this plays also into our warrant articles. So, as you know, one of the things that I brought up is the fact that, mm -hmm. let me. Blow this up a little bit. <laughs> Here. I just got to adjust a couple things to make sure we can see it. So this highlighted area right here represents. Uh, sorry, we have two hundred eighty-eight thousand and then ninety-six thousand. So just just under just under four hundred thousand. Um, that we're going to be paying off at the end of fiscal year, paying off in fiscal year 24. Mm -hmm. If we were to take free cash and pay off 24 and borrow the 4 million that we talked about, the payment of 4 million would slide right into here and it would pretty much keep the debt schedule up and allow us to really tackle some of our bigger infrastructure issues. What was that debt retirement number again? Was it you just I have the actual and can you in increase those two columns or you can't see the numbers? I think it's 24 and 25 or 25 and 26. Let me, let me see if I have a better one to look at that's a little easier to look at, but I don't think so. Uh, 2024 retirement. Yeah, so the town share is 288,000 that we would pay off. And then the water department has a payment of 96,000, which is their 25% share. What was so, the town number again? 288. 288. Okay. $982.05. The infrastructure loan from Unibank number was uh, 282,550. So, like I said, it would slide right in there to cover um, mm -hmm. to cover that, so that our debt would stay level. And you can see where our debt this year is one million. It's line eighty-one. Can everybody see that? Or should I? Move no, it? no, it's too small. 
Uh, line 81, our debt for this year is going to be 1466000 If we were to pay off in the next year and take on that new borrowing, our debt payment would stay at one four three five. So it would come down about 30000 but it would keep that debt at 1.4 going ahead in that line. So it doesn't reduce it, but it allows us to take on this four million without actually adding to the to the cost of our debt schedule. And this would come out of free cash? Yeah, I'm, I'm proposing that we take the 2024 this year out of free cash. And is that for both the town share and the water and sewer? In the water, and then if we want, we could work the water back in the following year, but I would I would go to Unibank and have them pay off the entire loan this year. So, but, but not using water and sewer, sewer reserves, you would use free cash? I would use free cash because water, water is gonna get down if you take a look and water will actually be, or sorry, this is sewer, not water. Sewer will be down to, uh, they're starting at 409. They'll be down to 233. But there is one thing that I'm going to be going to the Water and Sewer Commission next week about. So that is originally under ARPA. We were proposing to do the phase three INI study through mm -hmm. ARPA. ARPA, because it's federal funds, you have to go out to bid on all projects. There are no exemptions. Massachusetts procurement allows you to exempt engineering. We've had David Prickett and company doing our phase one and phase two, and the Water and Sewer Commission would like to stay, have phase three done by the same company that's been doing phase one and two. Massachusetts recognizes that when you're in a project like this doing a phase, they allow you, it's exempt from procurement. But if you use ARPA funds, you'd have to go out and rebid the whole uh, phase three. So I'm gonna be speaking to the Water and Sewer, so they might be adding another amount here to do, which would be 99,000, which mm -hmm. would actually reduce the balance of the water, or the sewer account, I keep saying water, I apologize, the sewer account down to 144,000, so. So they would take that, so we would effectively not use ARPA for water and sewer, but then we would give them here. I have a question for all of you, because you all have more experience than me. Um, where half the town is on water and sewer and half isn't, has there generally been a tradition of, of how much subsidy from kind of general things like free cash goes to water and sewer, which obviously has an impact on the rates, you know? Do we have a policy or is it just sort of like, I'm just asking. I would have to have the Water and Sewer Commission if there's an exact policy. <laughs> I'd defer that to the Finance Committee to how I know we're funding the I know. we're funding the uh, pump station strictly through the sewer. Right. Yeah. Um, right. When we take things like ARPA that you know can go for projects, I mean, you know, I, I've got no problem with it. I'm just wondering if there's, um, and I didn't realize you were pulling that back. But you know, when when I first heard about it, it we're going to basically cover both. Um, well, then it turned out that we yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this horrible situation. <laughs> it's federal yeah. procurement law, so. Okay, I guess not. What, uh, what else, Michael? <laughs> so now the question becomes, do we, do we want to take on debt um, for a bunch of projects? So the, the select board voted to remove the intersection. So if I take the intersection out, um, we could borrow less. Now here, here's the interesting thing is that what we could do is slide into the form, we could slide the fire truck into the $4 million and list that as one of the things to be funded if you are choosing to do the fire department because the fire, the fire truck, normally trucks can't be in the same borrowing because they're only allowed to be five years. Fire trucks are allowed to go out 20 years, which means they fall under the same section of law. So I checked with bond council and we can put it into the same section. They actually said that you can, you can have a board that just says $4 million for, uh, for equipment and infrastructure period. And then you could be as generic as you want for whatever you think town meeting will pass. There's actually a couple towns that actually pass on the budgets, even in their operational. So it's really the comfort level of the town. So 
one of the things that I was thinking is if we left this at the $4 million, what you do is list in the article fire truck and that would fix that. And then I'd remove those other articles that were in the warrant for the fire truck other than pulling 250 from free cash into that. Um, so we're going to continue to pull it. That's what you I would appropriate two hundred and fifty thousand toward the purchase, 250, right. and then put this other seven hundred and fifty or seven hundred and ten thousand in place of the infrastructure, and still more of the four million. Which, like we talked about, with the other number that comes out, the debt service still stays low. Right. So it's a one-time chance to sort of bite a bunch of these big infrastructure problems. And like we identified, we hit almost all of them except for the Curtisville Bridge, which is still sort of our unknown of where to go with that one. Other than that, we'd be hitting all of our major infrastructure issues. Tuckerman Bridge, Second Avrick Road, Salt Shed, Fire Engine, um, so, and any remaining funds we need to finish the police station project, which I'm going to estimate will come in maybe a hundred, hundred and a little above. So. Just, just one point on that. I, I want to add one point, Patrick. It, one, one thing that concerns me is obviously increased interest rates, okay, mm -hmm. and trying to deal with some of these needed items if we can as soon as possible. The longer we stall it out, A, you're going to have higher interest rates, B, is going to be an availability problem, an equipment availability problem where you may not even be able to get some of this stuff uh, for multiple years. Okay. Will take care of that, but and yes. inflation. Well, <laughs> inflationary, <laughs> the costs are going to go up. The costs are definitely going safe up. safe assumption. There's no question. Right. You know, and um, uh, from the uh, from the discussions we've had, you know, the perception is um, waiting only drives the cost up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Period. So this sort of fire truck, we we're appropriating the money for the fire the truck. We're not appropriate. We're not saying we're getting it at this point until we get the information we have and go through all that. We're appropriating money to be financially. Right, right. But it's, we're not we won't, we saying won't we're know, buying the truck. We won't know, Chuck, until December whether or not we get the grant. Or any other information that pops up if you need it or don't need it. I'm right. saying we're not saying that, that we're putting this in here because we're definitely getting the fire truck. I just want people to know that. Correct? Well, it's, um, we know it's no. fait accompli that we're going to have to get another fire truck. At some truck. point, but yes. At some point. And the big question is that the longer you put this off, the more it's going to cost, both in financing and in just the basic cost of whatever the equipment is. Um, we don't know whether we're going to get the grant or not. So I mean, one nice thing about this 4000 for all this array of different projects is you still have the flexibility to move it around based on the fluctuation of the costs of individual pieces of this, whether it's infrastructure, or it's fire right. truck. Now, we don't know if we're going to have to like fully outfit the fire truck. That's come up. That is, yeah, you price it out as a fully outfitted fire truck. However, you may not have to spend that much money because we we know we've replaced hoses, et cetera, in the last three years. So how much do you really need to spend? Um, and the thing is that until it's appropriated, you can't put an order in. Right. But I we know that we'll have to have two good trucks, regardless of what direction in the future, this fire department goes. If we go with shared services, right. yeah. we still need two good trucks. And we know we have two that are on their way out there at the end of their life cycle. So if we don't appropriate now, it's and like get an order place, in. I would call that a, a, like a placeholder to get the ball rolling. Yes. That's right. how I would refer and to, to that. And to not I'm delay saying we're it for too the money, long. But we're not guaranteeing well, that the truck is. I'm just saying, making it yeah. out there that it's not a it's like a done deal. Get to get on with that. I got financing is fine. That's yeah. not an issue. It's just yeah. I want to make sure that. And I know that I've talked to several of the officers. Yeah. So they're basically also in agreement that they don't feel real comfortable with having full time having the tanker, the the pump, tanker, the combo unit 
be the frontline equipment all the time. Doesn't mean that you don't use it on occasion. And I think we certainly should be rolling that truck and using it if we can't have it just sitting there. It's the best truck we have, the 2018. On the other hand, they're not real comfortable and they do really feel that they can't wait too long to get a new engine. There's something I think well, we, we have to look to, into that. I mean, that's all right. Hang on, just one at a time. Go ahead. Um, the select board did not cancel the intersection project. We simply no. deferred it for a month or two right. so that we don't deal with it right now. And if we go ahead with it, there might be two hundred fifty thousand grants there, but it's still seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars for the rest of it. That was that's a good plan. You know, we weighed many other plans that were much more expensive. I think, mm -hmm. folks, this is zipping down. A lot of folks have different opinions on what we should do there. But my point is, I think we should try to do that as soon as possible after town meeting so that we can get some clarity on whether we're going to have to actually appropriate the balance of that, you know, that need. And then as as uh, as we had make that decision and then make see what the, the you know, rolling the dice on the uh, grant for the fire truck is, you know, there may be some modification of this if we're able to kind of deal with it quick enough. We're still going to need that seven and ten thousand dollars for the intersection down the road. That's what I'm saying. Right, but we're so not, not. We've yeah. we've taken it out. But I say we've taken it out, but we still got a plan for it down. If in you the remove fall. it from the way we're right, the way we we're the way I was recommending that you write the ordinance to give you flexibility in use by taking the intersection out. Just know that the four million, none of that money can be used for the intersection. Right. right. It can only be used so for those items got, that are listed. We got to come, still more. got to come up with the seven on ten down the road if it passes. No, yeah. we're talking special town meeting. Yeah, I'm right. saying we still need that money down the road. So right. budget wise, we got. I did sure have. We still have. On that. the other hand, we, we know, right. you know, we're sitting on what do we have? One point one million in free cash. Yeah. We know we're probably going to roll in another eight hundred thousand dollars. So it's not yeah. that it's not doable. No, but I'm saying we just got to make sure we know that that's right. coming up. But the real reason it was pulled is just let's make sure that the public understands that plan, that proposal, how much exactly it's going to cost, exactly what we're going to do, and let them really weigh in on it. Um, you know, because we really want people to understand it, and I don't, I'm not sure that people really do. And so we have to be able to put together, we're going to talk to VHB and see if they have someone other than the traffic engineer who can come in and actually do a presentation that actually makes more sense to people. He's a traffic engineer. He's the nuts and bolts guy. He's the guy who designs it. But you need somebody who can come in and actually do a really good PowerPoint presentation and be able to to talk and answer questions in a way that's going to make sense, I think, to the public. One one thought. One thought. To, do you want me to mention the uh, the thought about the debt with the? Well, well, I don't want to leave this one. Just I just right now I have up on the board what the interest rates were estimated. So right now, uh, true interest rate costs uh, estimated by Unibank. If we were to go out right after town meeting uh, tomorrow, um, for after sorry July first. Uh, it would they're looking at an estimate of 2.55 uh, so you know that's pretty we good have an excellent bond rating we just went out on the other ones uh, we're still an attractive use but that is going to probably quickly change so and did we hear and, that and michael how does that compare to the uh interest rates on the existing debt um so what i can so we only have one number. We know that one existing debt is just one year of payment. So there's actually no, if you notice the 2024, Nothing. we're actually already paid all our interest. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I miss, so I miss we're that. just paying down the principal and sliding the new one in. Have, have, you, have we heard anything from Mass Historical on their plan or their, their requirements for? I have nothing for Curtisville. I know you don't, but I mean, to the point, I'm just gonna throw this out there, it may be a bad idea, but what's the bare minimum it's gonna cost us to do something with Curtisville? I don't know, what's the bare minimum? Well, I mean, well, we, we did- have, The estimate was 1.7 million. Right. So, and that has not been updated. However, the big sticking point is mass historical, right. yeah. whether or not we can go forward with it at all. But I'm gonna leave it there to rot. if. We can't do well. You also one borrow one, for a project you're not even sure if you're doing or if you have not have. But we could borrow for bridges. Design. One point that I have heard in the past, Patrick, 
is that we have at one point in time taken grant monies from Mass yeah. Historical yeah, that, for the Curtis Hill Bridge. Right it's there a and there. Story. The Bridges. grant monies predicate that the bridge would be restored in a historical manner. A historical manner, we have no idea relative to what the cost of historical have, restoration. Well, what they what they consider to be a historical restoration. Correct. Because that bridge was already done, redone. It's not the original original. It was done right. in like 1980 or something. It's concrete bridge with stone facing, which is what's now proposed to do. In other words, we want to basically have it look the way it has been looking for a very long time. But whether Mass Historic is going to think that's quote unquote historic. I was only halfway through my sentence though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my point was that if we have some bare minimum, we think it might cost, we could fund bridges and we could we could budget for the intersection on the caveat that the town meeting approves it and spend a little bit less on bridges, but borrow at the low rate or spend a little more on bridges if the town decides they don't want to do the 800,000 feet intersection. Uh, are you taking into account things like the Tuckerman Bridge where they could be condemned by the state if they were not operational? I don't think that's the same point with the Curtisville Bridge. Well, you know, some right. of the bridges that we're talking about, i.e. Afric uh, and uh, Tuckerman's and some of the others, Larawag, for example, were these not to be acted on, there would be con state condemnation and they would have to be permanently closed, okay? Oh, I'm not suggesting we delay. I'm simply coming, I'm coming up with a way for the town to weigh in on the intersection, but not get a higher rate if we have to go back out for that one little piece. I was just brainstorming. I don't know if that's a good idea or bad idea, but you know, Michael, I don't know. Is that something that we've thought about or no? I haven't thought about it because you're talking about not going to that that 1.7 was based on a 2015 number. Yeah, that's, um, that's way right. out of whack. Oh, so now yeah. you're talking what going six, seven million. But I mean, if we go yeah. with the intersection down the road, we're talking free cash, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I mean, and Patrick, you're the one that suggested that we take it out of there. So. I'm not suggesting that we, we take away the town's ability to decide. I just am cheap, but I want to get the, the most money, the low rate, if we know we're going to have to spend it. I think you will very definitely have to, if, when, when and if you do the to Curtisville Bridge, you'll, you'll need debt. You'll have to go out and borrow. Oh, that. absolutely. Big I'm time. Helping. Okay. Yeah. That's but be. not and, on the uh, intersection. I don't the think we're in a position to get into that right now. Yeah. I have so, a question small. about the intersection. Yeah. You mentioned having somebody come in other than this engineer mm. to explain. Would you do that at a special town meeting? We're going to do. Or before that. We're going to do. Well, a series Not of if, annual town. No, we're going to do a series of information meetings in summer and sometime late summer, early yeah. fall. Okay. We'll have a special town meeting, yeah. on it. and then maybe have a special town meeting, right? Yeah, to do an appropriation, right? Because we be would like to see debate. it happen. <laughs> we would like to get it accomplished, so everybody would understand. Just so everybody that. really understands what's happen. going on. Annual. Can I ask which right. intersection we're talking the about? Red line okay. Intersection. What was that, Neil? The, the one out here, the red line in. Why not be wanted by the fire station? That's I, I have more trouble with that than the right. Yeah, that's a whole different. I know. And actually, like that's right. just because it's part of the plan. Plan, but that's the next it's step. It's part of the long-term plan because we focused on Red Lion Inn and then the Main Street corridor because we also have issues with our crosswalks that are illegal. Um, so the crosswalk part of that is going to be handled. Michael has put in a grant to cover that. The intersection at Red Lion Inn is all designed. We've tested it with the paint on the road, et cetera. That's ready to go, assuming that the public approves of it. And then the next phase is we do have designs that were drawn up for the firehouse intersection as well. And so that would be the, like the next phase. Yeah, it's just an odd angle. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, if, if, yeah. If, if, I want them to make it just a simple T. I would be happy with that. Great, <laughs> if, if I might, can we kind of just summarize what we're talking about here yeah. relative to free cash uh, and uh, the four million well, in, in debt, the, the, right. four, the two separate issues. What's, what are we saying? Four million in debt. The four um, million in debt would be used for Tuckerman's mm -hmm. fire truck, Tuckerman Bridge, Everett Road Bridge, the fire truck, the salt shed, and pump station, all incidental related costs to those. So the select board would be limited to spending on only those projects 
as authorized by town meeting. So the four, the four million in debt would be, I want to be sure I have this, Tuckerman's, the fire truck, Abra 2, uh, the salt shed and the pump station. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. And then we're saying that free cash, uh, we would, we would uh, contemplate okay, using project. free cash for the, uh, the mid, the mid-sized plow trucks, the backhoe, the, uh, the two Ford trucks, uh, things of that order. Is that, is that a correct? Yep. The, on your, on your yes. list up here. Now stabilization, if we could just briefly talk about that. Okay. What I had mentioned was, is that we take, we have $1 million in the COVID and a dedicated COVID one, but we overall, we have 2.3 million in uh, stabilization. What I have brought up is taking 1.243, yes. setting that aside, and you can see up on the screen, this would be to cover the FY 24, 25, and 26, have the money set aside to pay off, pay down the loan on this building and the water treatment plant if the school was funded. So if the school's funded, pay down these, and that would allow that debt to come on, well, it would ease the hit of that year by setting that money aside in a dedicated account. So my understanding is the school, if everything goes according to feasibility and the rest, we're looking at next town meeting for a potential vote on the school. So that's what I've just thrown out there as a thought. What would happen is if we, if the school isn't funded or it's delayed in funding, then that money in the stabilization could always get appropriated at the next town meeting for capital or projects or whatever. So it would be using now our reserves going forward because with interest rates going up, I'm anticipating that we'd be using reserves and free cash for capital purchases over the next number of years. But the 4 million gets a majority of those projects. Right. So it's just a plan. It's thrown up for these two committees to consider. Okay, any, uh, okay. any further discussion on that at this point? How much is the pump station? It was originally 750,000. I think it went up to 1.2 million, somewhere around there. Is that about right? For the pump station, yeah. the new project? Yeah. Yeah, we thought it was going to be 720. It came out as 1.13. Yeah. And it did do that mainly because we had one bidder who bid high and the, uh, everybody else was busy. So we're hoping to rebid it and get that price down but we just want to have a little cushion. That's why we included this, the pump station in that borrowing, just so that if we needed to get a little bit extra to get us over the top, we can take care of that. And how are we going to- question. Why is it so high? Uh, we're serving 18 families there. I just have trouble believing it's that expensive. What? 18 families on Park Street. What's that? We're talking the Park Street. The Park Street pump Park station. Street. What a pump station. 18 families served by that. That seems like a high number to serve 18 families. Well, I mean, that's the estimate that that's we got. The, and, and I could have uh, Tony address. Uh, I didn't realize it was just, I think it's storm. It's also sewage. Any sewage that from down there or around that area that needs to be pumped back up in order to get, because you're going from a lower section of town. Right. It's wetland. It's also there. stormwater, Neil. No, it's not stormwater. No. It's, it's not so stormwater at all. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why it's coming out of the that's sewer. That's misconception. That's why it's coming out of the sewer account. It, that's the cost of things nowadays. I mean, the material is, if you can get it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're getting prices. To copper. You it's a, you prep copper, you get the you, price you know, that day and it's sold that day, that's it, next so, day's a new price. No, I don't, but I, I kind of test, testify to the fact that it's an aging piece and that it's very hard for them to get parts for it. I know even the last, uh, you know, I've even jumped in and helped with putting man hours down there and I know that- uh, It's not overflowing because it, <clears throat> it's, it's failed at times. Yeah. It's, it's, it's at the end of its useful life, the pump station down there. And that, that's, that's the cost of a pump station. To pump all that. And so if off. this debt stays as it currently is, what's the source of funds that pays this debt? Taxes. 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 Not rates. Not not these. Tax. Not not what was your rates. rates. This this borrowing that is on the books that you want to retire. Is it oh no, this almost all of it is this building. 
There's only no, there's more in sewer. There's two lines. I know. There's sixty thousand. There's one hundred and seventy thousand remaining in the water plant. That was the original plan. That was funded by the town. The original plan. Okay. So um, and the town offices. So you can see that it's one point two million. And on the pump station, if it were financed, would that be come from ratepayers or would it come from and the general the fund? Pump stations being paid by the ratepayers. Okay. No, regardless of whether or not we use free cash or not. It was already borrowed. We borrowed the money for the free. We just might have to come up with a. We think it's. Going we to have to borrow more money. money. Are we, oh, because we're short. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not making up the whole thing. We're only making up a part of it. All right. So half a million. million though. Yeah. Okay. Correct. No, 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 no. We we expect it to be in about eight hundred. We think because of the lack of bidders, drove up the price because people right now are putting in high bids because they're just so busy and basically if if you tell them you're going to go. You're going to pay that much, they'll they'll come and do it. But if not, yeah, it's a difficult environment right now out there. And, and my question for you, Steve, is do, historically, do we have a policy of how much the reserve should be in water and sewer? Because it's the same issue with water and sewer that we have with free cash, which is, you know, basically, I just want to make sure we're not charging taxpayers twice. We charge them already and they build up this like thing. And then we, you know, and I don't mean to, I'm not, I'm not, you know, against water and sewer. I just feel like, I think we should have reasonable reserve, and you know, does that policy cover them too, or there is no policy? Yeah, <laughs> I have a quick question. That, 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 that's an, another topic completely. Let's have that conversation at some point. Though. Right. I have a quick question. Talbot Center replacement. Where is that money going to come? From? Nowhere. Talbot Center. I, it's about yes. this year's operational yeah. budget. Yes, we'll be. Pardon me? It'll come out of this year's operation. Okay. Yeah. The operational budget before. overall is okay. in great shape. Can we just grab one of those shacks that they keep tearing down on the Soccer's Bowl to build these giant <laughs> houses? And <laughs> you know, I think that would be great. Okay. okay. I think I think what we need to do. Um, it, it it would be helpful that the way um, Michael has articulated the capital request out of either. Uh, operating or free cash. It's all pretty well laid out in the warrants, okay? And um, I think it might be interesting to start to run through some of these quickly. What do you, what do you think about that? Um, because I'm not sure there's... Uh, Haven't we gone, we've gone through... We, we approved we've gone them. through all of them previously. Yeah. Uh, uh, we yeah. haven't gone through the, the, uh, the CPC warrants. I think... I, I think we, I think has, yeah, how about yeah. instead, if anybody has a question on I think we did, we had two, we There are had two articles that were highlighted that aren't finished. Right. And other than those, the rest right. of the board, the rest are if you have a question, but, let me know. If not, I was planning on just skipping to the highlighted ones. Yeah. But one yeah. last question. Is there any part of the operator capital budget that anybody on the finance committee feels is at odds, our strategy is, uh, is at odds with your strategy? Like, are we all on the same page now? Well, it, you know, again, it's your budget and it's your votes. <laughs> I understand that, but I would okay, rather... So, so, they're going to have so, a follow-up so, meeting so, where they're going to... So the question yeah, is, what is your strategy? <laughs> well, we are reading it. But rather than vote against something, it would be much better to have a conversation if there's something... Well, you I think, that, you know, I think you've heard the conversation yeah. here. Uh, you know, there's some differences of opinion over certain things. But I think for the most part, there's it's general agreement on the operating general budget. acceptance. There's general agreement on the operating budget. Right. And I think that for the most part, the articles are uh, would probably get a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. The only question I have, I have to tell you, when, when you look at the warrant, is what time do you think people are going to go home from this meeting? Well, it'll go quick. It will, huh? 50. Well, we got the clicker thing. That's what you told me last year. Well, that we didn't have, Charlie Kenny got up and, and uh, wanted to streamline it, and then that wasted about 20 minutes. So I think I, we'll I, go quick. But I think we should consider going back to the old CPC thing where we bought on them all at once. You know, it, well, we tried to. Okay, if, to if, I, if I might, can we talk about what, uh, the. Uh, Potential question, Article 52, Michael. I'm happy I'm sitting here. <laughs> so uh, Article 52 uh, is, is the $4 million borrowing. So I take the intersection out and alter that to add the fire truck to it. 
Right. Uh, you will see up there that I struck the, the end there. There's been a change in Mass General Law as informed by Bond Council today that we don't have to we don't have to continue the statement on any proceeds paying down that it automatically happens. They were listing it before that you had to do. So I did that's up on the board, it's not in your one, but it's it's just a technicality. It has nothing to do with the borrowing at all. So what I do with 52 is leave it at the 4 million at the fire truck, remove the intersection. And then 54 would be to appropriate 250,000 for the purpose of, it would be the final one, 250 from available free cash for the purpose of funding a replacement fire engine pumper. And I'll make sure all the language lines up that we're saying the same thing in each one. Why do we need 54? Uh, so that that way we're only putting 750 in the borrowing and that replaced the intersection, keeps the inter, keeps the mm -hmm. borrowing at 4 million the same. and uses 250 from free cash for that. But we would obviously wait until after the AFG grant and then it would go to the selectmen at that point. So we're talking about December for making that determination. Okay. Those are the only two articles that are still in play. But aren't you going to put out, go out for the borrowing right after this passes? What yes. are we waiting for December on? But we don't have to, to go out to bid on the truck. We'll wait till the AFG grant. Okay. But we're going to borrow the money first without yes. knowing what it's going to cost. Borrow the money right now right. because we can begin the projects within this. You have to be able to begin your projects within, uh, within six months. Okay. And then you have to have a plan to acquisition within two years. So similar to even our the way it's listed. So if we go out to bid in, in right after in December, if you were to go out in January, and then you basically are waiting for it to be delivered, then that's considered that you've already spent the funds because you've signed off to spend them. It meets our legal requirements of using the loan amount. So. I would ask you, Michael, if you might, um, and I think we talked about these, spend just two minutes on Article 56. That's the uh, that's the 1.5 million educational borrowing, please. Uh, the school has requested that we put an authorization for them to borrow 1.5 million. And that is the total cost of the borrowing for the district, not our just share thanks. of it, but they have to have an authorization from all three towns to borrow the total amount. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. it gets the, it, the payment is based upon the capital. Uh, Our share is 450,000. Right. right. So <clears throat> if you scroll down, is the $450,000 in there anywhere? No, nope. it's not in there. We can't put it in there. It, you that? don't put it in there. No. Because it's a district. Committed. But it needs right. to be explained. Yep, yeah. and this would be the district would step up to explain this article. That's that's and my point, Roxanne. It has to be explained. Or you. Yeah, somebody's got to explain you. that yeah. one. Exactly. Okay. And very, we voted for the school the last time, and some of our some of our partners did not. But the reason why uh, MSBA isn't paying for this is they only paid for it once, and they already paid for it in the one that got voted down. So we're going to now have to pay. This is this. Yeah, this is. Well, and, and well, there's also the question, the unsettled it. question as to where the district, uh, Southern Berkshire and Berkshire Hills, the relate a potential relationship, where is that? You know, at the, the it's nowhere. That's yeah. where this is funded. Yeah, this exactly. Is, this is to look at that. But I mean, we, exactly, that's yeah. correct. Can I ask but, a question about the four million? Hmm? Can, may I ask a question about the $4 million in new debt? Yes. Go vote. Um, that's a suspiciously um, round number. <laughs> uh, do, do you, Michael, is it? Uh, are you confident that everything can fit within the four million? Or, uh, and if so, should the number be three million nine hundred and forty thousand, so that it looks like we worked at it? Or um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind explaining to. Uh, let me, sorry, let me go back and I can actually have a slide for this. Uh, capital budget, there we go. You can see here that the new debt, so when I put in Where'd it go? the fire truck, so if I replace this with the fire, what you do is you end up with a balance of 4,678,000. 
we're anticipating that we can get the small bridge grant and for engineering and construction to finish off the Everett Road Bridge. That brings us down to a balance of being 4093000 These projects are gonna happen over the next two years. We have to go out for chapter 85 review on the bridge and the engineering work. So what I'm anticipating is, is that we may have to, I'm gonna anticipate that we're gonna have to dip a little bit probably next year into free cash to cover where we're at, depending on where the costs come in. These are costs based on the Tuckerman Bridge is already two months ago. That's the most, that was the most recent one. The average price there is from a year and a half ago. Um, so that one would need to be adjusted. The fire engine's a current one, salt shed's a current one, and the pump station's an estimate on where we think we're gonna come in. So yeah, the 4 million is a nice round number. I don't think we'll end up there. I think we're gonna have to come back and ask for a little more to finish these off. Um, or if we get the fire, if we get the AFG grant, then I think a lot of these will fall in the line. Um, and do you think that 250 is enough of a cushion? The one for article, what is it, 56? I think because we're gonna bring the $800,000 of free cash, as similar to what you guys said, we're gonna have free cash. We shouldn't be borrowing more than we need to. So if anything, I'm being, I'm being undervaluing this because I know that we have reserves we can tap to finish these projects off. So maybe Bill's idea is a good one. Let's go for three, nine, four. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't mean to make light of the problem. Um, yeah. uh, and, and I know that uh, bond council is going to check the numbers and, and isn't going to allow us to borrow uh, if we can't demonstrate Right. Um, what every dollar is going to be spent on, um, uh, yep. but you know, if it if it makes sense to um, uh, again be conservative and borrow uh, slightly more than four million on the grounds that you just described, Michael, um, I think that's not an unreasonable uh, approach. Um, the only reason I don't recommend that bill is because we're going to be, we should see a significant free cash come in again because of the undervalue on local receipts and we didn't see it happen. So I think we're going to end up with an additional 100,000 or 800,000 in uh, free cash next year added to that 1.1. So if we end up over, um, the reason why I already talked to bond council about all these and the reason why we're putting 4 million and a round number with those in there is because we didn't want to label each of them as individual borrowings because then with the fluctuation in pricing if we end up slightly over we can't authorize a project if we don't have the appropriation i see so, okay i got you that, that that makes sense mike thank you yeah okay anything else uh at this point um, i'm sorry neil i've forgotten where the tuckerman bridge is the tuckerman bridge is oh, down by the golf course you know, with that, you go down by the golf course and it goes over the, the two parts of the Stockbridge Country Club. Is it that bad? It's getting yeah. that bad, yeah. So and and we, recent, we recently uh, replaced the, uh, the uh, services, water and sewer on, on that facility. And uh, the state has eyed this as a potential problem. That was, no. uh, that was on the, that was Curtis, that was Curtisville. That was well, we did do Tuckerman's work. too. We did Tuckerman. do some work on the Tuckerman water and sewer lines, but <laughs> yeah. so the yeah. Tuckerman bridge has what's yeah. called a, now I don't want to pay people, but it's listed in our bridge inspection report as what's called a critical failure. It's right. It's been identified for about the last six years. It is what has caused the rating of the bridge to be lowered from 24 tons to nine tons. As time goes on, the bridge will be rated lower until DOT. Until it's completely closes. condemned. Then we'll end up scrambling with a bridge close. What we're trying to do is get ahead of the bridge closure, get design work done, which takes a year to uh, 18 months to get through Chapter 85 uh, bridge review, then go out and bid the bridge project and get the bridge. What the bridge will still have to probably be shut down for a year replacement but we're trying to get ahead of this instead of having the bridge closed on us spend a year and a half in design while it's closed then spend the construction time so we're trying to get ahead of it um and stay ahead on these bridges i meet every month with my 
with uh, water, sewer, and highway, and any new bridge reports that come in, we go over them. And we're going to try to stay ahead of all of our bridges so we don't have a bridge closed on us. And just like a see how much traffic in the old days that was between 9.1 tons and 24 tons did that bridge get? It gets a lot of traffic. A, a, a lot. A lot. It gets, it gets, a, gets lot a lot of traffic. Of traffic. Uh, no, I'm talking about traffic that is now above the rating because I'm not sure that people, you know, yeah. Are people to have people change their habits. All that twenty-four ton traffic or fifteen ton traffic is now going some other route. You got a gravel the pit. Big you have a, that yeah, a big trucks that are around that. You have a gravel it, business, it, right? It, right, it, right there. Business. Yeah. It's, excuse me, just one second. Hugh, you have any comments as to the traffic for the Tuckerman's Bridge? It hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. I mean, oil trucks, anything goes over that. Thing. Right. Are they Mail more than nine tons? Over is there a safety issue that we're not? Really, it's not. It. We post the sign. It's posted, mm -hmm. and it's a responsibility of the truckers and their right. loads to um, properly use the paths that they need to take. Yeah, the DOP pretty much monitors that. You know, I think. So, yeah. our job now is to try to make sure we're trying to get ahead. I know, but I'm just saying, if like <laughs> if it falls in the water, we're going to blame. We don't want to cave it in. <laughs> Okay, we're so doing everything we're legally have really? to do. There's okay. nothing else we can do, Patrick. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else uh, that we have to talk about right now? There is a meeting scheduled for next Wednesday, the 20th, for the Finance Committee at 6 p.m. That's number one. And we have also a tentative uh, meeting scheduled uh, for the Baby Town meeting on May 9. Uh, which is a week before the town meeting, just about a week before the town meeting. And we don't typically go, or we do? To be what? We do. Or we do. Yeah, exactly. So Wednesday, you're having your meeting at Wednesday? This coming this Wednesday. Coming we, Wednesday? This coming Wednesday. What time? And I will circulate the agenda tomorrow. It's 6 rather than 6.30. Which one? 6. It's uh, 20th. It's 6, 6 p.m. 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. on the 20th. You'll get a note from me tomorrow. We just we no. can attend it, but we're not involved in it, correct? <laughs> right. What's the the night? baby town meeting? Not really. No, we do the we don't do that. No, we do that. Yeah, we don't do the, the finance town. committee. Do does. Know, I Michael, just, do we just, need yeah, as a select board need to have another meeting right. <laughs> prior to their <laughs> six p.m.? Do you want I to I come, but we just try not. to do another meeting quickly about the merit increases? What time is that going to be? Yeah, we can six. We can do that because right now you guys haven't finalized. The select board voted on all articles except for Article 4, 52, and 54. Right. So all the other articles have been approved. Can we meet before next Wednesday, 6 p.m., so we can just go over those couple of Warren articles and the merit increases? Can we do it now? Is this part of the meeting? Can we adjourn? Really can we do it now? There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you guys want to approve 52 and 54, I think those two sure. are good. Sure. Um, do you want to share the... Uh, and then I can... Merit. So, uh, so 52, you're going to approve with the change of the fire engine and leave it at the $4 million. Make a motion to add the fire engine and take out the intersection. Second. Oh. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And now 50, 54 will become the third one, which is to see if the town will vote to transfer and appropriate some of 250000 from available free cash for the purpose of funding the replacement fire action. We already voted on that last week. We already voted on that. Didn't because, okay, yeah. didn't because yeah. there were three options. Oh, because we were still thinking about right. right. options. Yeah. Yes. 54 okay. in. Yeah. All right. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So as far as what I put in, let me go to the general government one. I do like Bill's idea though, to fund it at 3.95 though. Just saying. <laughs> it's sort of like when, you know, it's like hamburgers are 99 cents, you know? So. Okay, so um, basically. Um, so, Roxanne, here are the, oh, I wasn't sharing the screen. That helps. I just want to make sure um, uh, so, if, if Bill, you have any other comments at this point? Oh, Jim has a hand up. I'm going to ask him. Jim? 
Jim Ball fans. Yes. Uh, well, I have a comment in the recommendation. Looking at the articles that where they were, I think it was at 54, whatever it is, for the four million. I just feel that anything of that magnitude should be early on that on that town vote. To go wait all the way to Article 54, you might have 150 people left there. I just would recommend a reprioritization mm -hmm. of how you're going to present these articles. Good point. I'll put that up in front of yeah. the CDC, CBC ones. Put it right up top. I'll, I'll pick yeah. it I think that if, if the Finance Committee meets on Wednesday and we vote the articles, I don't think shifting the order would change. No. Would be a reason if Thursday night, if we reordered them, I don't think there'd be any reason why we can't still proceed that way. Because you're only voting the each article, the finance committee, if I read reading the bylaws to support or not support the, the, the article itself. Well, if I understand it correctly, it's the select board that determines the number. No, 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 I, I understand that, but we're meet, you guys would be meeting before the select board for us to reorder. I don't well, that's think- I don't That's my own I don't think that's what Jim's talking about. Yeah. I think he's talking about the order at the town meeting. Right. 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 But, but we yeah. can renumber it. And you can renumber it. You can Regardless, renumber them any time. Because you're going to approve yeah. or not. Yeah. Also, yeah. moderator. I think your point was well taken, Jim. Thank yeah. You, Jim. Good point. I mean, the moderator last year. Impressive. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, yeah. Jim, are you remember that? <laughs> Jim, are you suggesting that we do 52 54 in the school at the end so that nobody is there to vote on it? Yeah, that's what they're sure <laughs> Well, I do have an additional comment on the school, but I'll save that for our meeting. <laughs> okay. Any other business to come before this committee? If the, if the select board wanted to go over, I could quickly show what I did for uh, Mayor. So you can see okay. column N and O. Um, recommendations. N is the 2% flat one for everybody. Then an extra rate. So I'm recommending 1% uh, for most employees across the board. I'm yep. re recommending a 2% for our treasurer, Erica Olson, and for Teresa Zanetti for their outstanding work. Okay. And and somewhere else, I think it was already included. I think Jennifer was yep. included somewhere else. And there was some discussion at some point about the moderator's pay. And was oh, that one I didn't take into consideration. If, if you guys want to change the moderator, that doesn't have its own. Um, it's some silly it hasn't small. hasn't changed in years. It hasn't changed since really 2020. It's been 200. That was the tree warden that we were talking about. And we, we, we brought up the tree warden as well. Yeah. And, and yeah. the tree and the moderators is not there because we just it hasn't been raised in a while. It's been like forever. Let me see. 240 yeah, bucks this forever. Is all set, huh? <laughs> that was highlighted. Right. And yes, you have the tree warden highlighted from a previous meeting. That's my apology. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you? Look, I think it's what now, 2000? It's no. 2250. Right. So basically paying them less than 50 bucks a week. You know, I, I think we should raise it. And we, I think if, I think we should either raise it or we should vote to make it a part of one of somebody in, in, a, in Hughes' department to have it as their job responsibilities. We either got to fund the job as an elected position or we got to make sure that the job gets done at highway. It's it's an elected position. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an elected position. It's an elected position. Town meeting has to position. change that. I understand that. Change. What's up? Town meeting has to change that. Of course it does. I'm just saying that if we're not going to fund it independently, you know. Is two, I, it's hard to see. 2,252. I How know much? what that one is, but uh, two above it. Is that 27 or 22? 22. 22. It's 22. And, and what position is that? Wire inspector expenses. Okay. The wire okay. inspector gets 7,400. Okay. Well, can we agree to like increase this to what? what do, you do you want think? to do 100 a week? Do you want to do you want to break it down to a weekly one? How do you want to break it down as far as the work of the tree? I'd like to understand what the job is and how long it takes and then pay him so that he has the time he's getting paid to do the job. 
And I don't know the answer. Well, we do that for next year because I, I think that that no, would be yeah, something yeah. you might want to look at in the future because the this year, is based on historical. Yeah, I get it. Uh, you know, we could we could look at some of these things as we go I forward. Would, I mean, I'm just looking year. at so the series. It's 2137, then 2180, then 2208, and then 2252. So there is an increase here of 44 yeah. bucks. Right. Well, it's a percentage. 80 cents a week. Yay. Just a percent, well. right? Probably. <laughs> Let's go up to 100 bucks a week and then figure it out next year. I mean, it's a couple thousand bucks. The guy's like all over town. Wow. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that at this point. Yeah. No, we don't know. I think you're singling out a single situation yeah. that really needs to be aggregated with the rest of the, yeah. uh, the, the staff. Uh, it's these weird so, staff positions that aren't really staff. It's like well, two thousand dollars to do well, the, the, Patrick, two it's weeks a, of it, covering it, up. It, you know, think about the select board salaries. The, the, select board salaries are what they are. The, and, this is, we're the, not getting paid based on how many hours. But we get to march at the front of the parade. You know, so you can yeah. march in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you, know, you I can pair a guy who's got to make sure the trees are safe. You know, with I mean, he know, he took the job. He got elected. He ran for he's it. He's happy. And he's doing an excellent job. I think job. we should look into it, but I, I think it would be next year's budget. Okay. Is there anything yeah. else? 75 then? Are we just going to drop it? We'll drop it. I think you, we're going to get just 2%. Uh, is there any other business yeah. that we need to we talk about before we uh, we adjourn for the evening? Well, we're not going to adjourn because like we have another piece of business okay. to handle. <laughs> but you can adjourn. We can adjourn. We can adjourn. Uh, I will move at the Finance Committee meeting. And if that would be eight. I'm on the finance awesome. committee meeting. <laughs> eight on the Out of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jim and okay. Bill. Thank you. Thank guys. you, everybody. So we approve, All right. we approve that. We're done with this. Thank you. We approve that. <laughs> We're done. You're good. That's approved. We're done. Because it's this isn't hypothetical. This isn't okay. hypothetical. You know, we actually had that person leaving Tanglewood who got hit by a tree. I know. An unsafe tree. Patrick. Okay, Patrick. Are you going to pay him a million bucks because we have. We have one more piece of business, we, please. Ninety thousand dollars in police. Do I have to go get, get the gavel? We have, a we have another piece of business. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Um, the gavel. I love the gavel. I need the gavel. For the gavel you. works for you. You guys <laughs> 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 All right. Sorry, everyone okay. out there. Um, our next piece of business is on board is to address the seasonal alcohol license renewals for Boston Symphony Orchestra, Berkshire Theater okay. Festival, and the trustees of reservations. Thank you. So I move that we um, approve the seasonal alcohol license renewals as just stated. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So, any questions or comments at this point from the public? Thanks, Jim. You don't want Thanks, to announce Jim. that somebody resigned? I'm comfortable. No, you're not. I've been asked to not do that. Um, so, hearing none, um, I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right.